What is going on Diablo 2 fans? Dabrinsky here and I'm back with another Diablo 2 build video and today I'm going to be breaking down the quote unquote new meta maggot layer farming hurricane druid now this build was kind of a collaboration between community members i didn't come up with it on my own and i'm sure it has been used before but it's actually very effective in the maggot layer i mean you have everything that you need to farm that area relatively efficiently no it's not your god tier ancient tunnels blizzard sorcerers build but it's definitely cool for variety but like all of my previous build videos timestamps will be in the description below so if you guys want to bounce back and forth between the attributes the gear or the gameplay they're there for you guys to use Use, so please take advantage of them other than that guys I really do hope you enjoy this video let's jump in so before I dive into the specifics of this hurricane wind build there's three main discussion points that I want to elaborate a little bit on really just to save myself a lot of questions in the comments section below so the first main point or question is what area level is the maggot layer so level one and two it's area level 84 and level three is area level 85 so what does that mean well in a nutshell Bosses can drop every item in the game in level 1, 2, and 3. And then champions can drop every item in the game in level 3. But then in level 1 and 2, they drop like Pindles, so they can drop every item in the game except for Tyrael's Might, Arachnid's Mesh, and Azeroth. So essentially, they're like farming Pindle. And the final super unique, Cold Worm, uh, he or she is capped out at TC78. So you cannot drop every item in the game off of that specific super unique. So please don't expect to be dropping Materials might off of that big worm is just not gonna happen. Second question that I want to touch on is why the wind druid specifically? Well, in my opinion, he has everything that you need to effectively farm the maggot layer. Now I know I use the word effectively very loosely. I mean it's definitely not like your ancient tunnels blizzard sorcerers build, but really cyclone armor does an amazing job of face tanking all of the electric damage that you get from the beetles down there. And the hurricane damage with the specific gear that I'm using, the majority of monsters, they are going to be at minus 100 uh, cold resistance. So you just melt everything with hurricane. It has great AOE. So you just teleport around the tunnels, heli stomp, and then anything in the radius of the hurricane is just going to get shattered and instantly killed. So it's a very simple and easy build to play. It's extremely safe. It's not like using a fire sorcerer, for instance, where you can teleport around, but then you really need to try and aim your fireballs through the curving tunnels and stuff and it can be a bit of a pain in the butt but not at all with the wind Red. you just tele stomp right on top of the monster and then hurricane will destroy everything and you will take zero damage because cyclone armor absorbs everything the only thing that you need to worry about with this build is just recasting hurricane every 50 or so seconds and then keeping up on your cyclone armor and keeping it recasted other than that you will basically take next to no damage and teleport around and instantly shatter everything on players one difficulty the third and final question that i want to touch on is what is the optimal player difficulty setting for this particular wind druid build and area so in my opinion for this mega layer build you want to be farming players one exclusively and that is because if you're targeting bosses and champions specifically which in this particular build i think you should be they will always drop a specific number of items regardless of the player's difficulty count so upping it to three, five, or seven is not going to have them drop more items, so it's just not worth it. And the second point why I think players want difficulty is really good is because you will take a lot less lightning damage from beetles. So on a higher player's count, they're going to be dishing out a lot more elemental damage, which is going to do two things. One is it's going to kill your Oak Sage a lot quicker and it's going to chew through your cyclone armor a lot faster. So with this particular setup, which you will see when we dive into the gameplay, your cyclone armor, you basically just have to recast it every level. But on a higher player's difficulty count, the monsters take longer to kill and you have to kind of stop midway through each layer run and then recast it, which does get a little bit annoying in my opinion. So I would definitely stick with players one but again, that's up to you. You guys can play around and try a higher difficulty count like players three or five. I would definitely probably stay away from seven, but uh, in my opinion, definitely go players one. But that covers the main topic points that I want to discuss. So now we'll take a look at the attribute distribution. I don't want to spend too much time going over the attributes because I have covered it extensively in previous build videos. But for the sake of just briefly touching on it, I have 156 into strength. So this is the bare minimum requirement with my gear and base uh, stat points to equip the rumored spirit in a monarch shield. Nothing into dexterity. And then instead of going max vita with this build, I have 394 
points into vitality with just under 200 uh, into energy. So when I'm buffed up with battle orders, I have three and a half thousand health with 1200 mana. So when we dive into the gear, it'll kind of make a little bit more sense because I'm not using SOJs or Shaco. So your mana count is going to be a little bit low. But because of Oak Sage, you can kind of counteract having uh, lower health because you get the Battle Orders boost and Oak Sage. So less points in Vitality is not a huge deal with this particular build. I do think that somewhere around, like I wouldn't go less than a thousand mana. 1200 is really nice. Uh, again, it's up to you. You guys can play around depending on how much you want to pot or what's an inconvenience for you. You guys can kind of tailor how much mana you invest with your character. As far as resistances go, I have 11 to fire. 52 to cold, 47 to lightning, and 34 to poison. Now as long as you are keeping your cyclone armor recasted on a frequent basis, your resistances isn't too important, but with the gear, which again you'll see when we break it down, this is, I didn't really try and shoot for resistance, it's just kind of what I have with the base gear. Now as far as important uh, FCR and infantry breakpoints to cover, this is a 99 FCR teleporting Windrew build. You can try for 163, but you're going to have to use very specific gear, including dropping the special faceted Isted Crystal Sword that I have on this setup. So I think 99 is optimal. Again, it's up to you guys to play around. For faster hit recovery, I have 65 total, but the breakpoint is actually 63. So again, we're covered there. You can try and shoot for 99, but you're going to need very specific and special gear like elemental skills with plus FHR and you'll have to, you know, socket your night wings or whatever else you're using with specific FHR and like all res jewels to hit that 99 breakpoint. It's very difficult to hit and is kind of overkill in my opinion for PV, uh, PVM, but that basically covers the attributes and the important breakpoints that you need to know. So we'll quickly run over the skill tree and then we'll go over the gear. So I'm not going to spend too much time diving into the allocation of skill points because I do have previously made Windruid build guides on my channel. The links for them, they're in the description below. So guys, please reference them for a more detailed explanation. But a quick rundown, the shape-shifting skill tree, nothing invested. Elemental skill tree, we have Cyclone Armor, Tornado, Twister, and Hurricane. They're all maxed because they synergize each other. And then for the summoning skill tree, we have one into Raven, two into the wolves, so one into each of them, one into the bear, and then the remaining points are put into Oak Sage. And since this is a level 94 Wind Druid, each consecutive level I'm going to be putting a point into Oak Sage until it's fully maxed. And then from there it's up to you. If you want, you can put extra points into the bear, or you can put some points into the vine tree to eventually get Solar Creeper for mana recovery. It's up to you. You gotta really play the druid up until I think it's level 97 and 98 to start having extra skill points to invest. So really, I don't think too many people are going to play it that far with the wind druid. Not a lot of people like to level it for whatever reason, but that's really a breakdown of the skill tree, a quick one. So now again, we'll dive into the gear and then gameplay. This character is built around maximizing hurricane damage while supplementing with a decent amount of magic find. You can tailor the inventory with more magic find small charms if you want to substitute more MF for less hurricane damage. Again, it's up to you on how you want to tailor the setup. But going over the gear first, the sword, which is kind of the really unique point of this build, it's a double isted four faceted crystal sword that gives me plus 13% cold damage, minus 16 enemy cold resistance with 60% MF. You can substitute more ist runes or more facets depending on how you want to set up the build, but in regards to minus resistance, every monster, unless the boss pack is cold enchanted or magic resistance, will have zero cold res. So between this sword and then the minus 86 resistance from infinity, everything will already be at minus 100. So keep in mind that adding more facets for more extra minus cold res is only going to help you for certain specific bosses that have the cold enchanted mod. Again, it's up to you. You can decide how you want to do the rest of the setup. The gloves I'm using Trangs for the 20 FCR and cold res, Arachnid's Mesh for the plus skill and 20 FCR. And then I have two FCR rings that have plus strength and MF. You could get better rings in this, but this is just a good way of helping reach that 99 FCR and then stacking a little bit extra magic find. The boots, I'm using these rare boots with lightning, fire, MF, and then 10 FHR. That's how I reach the 63 FHR breakpoint. Again, paired with a 35 FCR spirit. 
Uh, now with the caster ammo that I'm using, you could run a 34 FCR spirit. It depends on how much FCR you have on the caster ammo, but this particular one is two druid skills with five FCR, 15 all res and 20 MF. So it's a really nice complement to this build in my opinion. Body armor as always Enigma. If you cannot tally stomp with a wind druid, you might as well not play the wind druid at all. Uh, in my opinion, no chains of honor, nothing like that. Just Enigma for the plus skills, MF, damage reduction, maximum life, everything that it has that we love about Enigma. And then it's paired with this beautiful 15 cold damage, Isted Nightwings. So we get the two doll skills, cool absorb, and a little bit of MF with the plus 15 cold damage, which is really huge for boosting that hurricane damage. Because again, this build's primary source of damage is hurricane. And then that is paired with a 463 CTA and then a junk spirit. This is anti-perfect FCR. It doesn't matter. It's just for boosting our battle orders. The inventory is Torch and Annie. Uh, one Geed's Grand Charm, 40 MF, with a full inventory of plane or semi-plane skillers that just really have dex or max damage that are useless. So you can substitute these for MF small charms, like I said, or preferably better elemental skillers that have like plus life and FHR. And then each and every single one of these small charms is a 6 MF, with the exception of the 7 MF. So if you want to squeak out every little bit of magic find, you could run all 7 MF small charms with war travelers again i just use these rare boots because i really like them but that's basically the druid setup now the mercenary is where things get a little interesting we're not using the standard reaper's tool setup because we're not trying to boost tornado damage we're specifically trying to boost hurricane damage and we do that through the rumored infinity for that conviction aura and then it's just paired with my standard setup of an e-bug fortitude and a vamp gaze with the cham room but this combination of gear really helps boost the hurricane damage, which helps us fly through the mega layer, which you're gonna see now with some gameplay. All you need to do for this build is make sure you keep your cyclone armor and your hurricane ready and telly stomp. And let's just show you guys how new and meta this build is. So here's a champion pack, or sorry, boss pack, excuse me. Telly stomp, hurricane dead. Now it is a little bit annoying trying to isolate the champion boss packs, which you're going to have to do several runs to kind of figure out where they spawn. So I kind of have an idea where they do spawn. I don't check chests very often because they're not, they're super chests, or there's, I think they're super chests. They're capped out at a low run specifically, and on players one difficulty, you're going to have very poor um, chances or drop odds of getting anything nice anyways. Generally, player seven is the best for anything chest related. So then that was leveled down. So just recast Cyclone Armor and Hurricane. Again, you're looking for those kind of neon glows. I'll try and see if I can get a good example to show you guys. We'll get a little bit low on mana, just pot up. So here's a boss pack, Telly Stomp. Cyclone Armor takes care of everything. Okay, so there's no glow boss back there, so let's kind of leave it. I'm trying to really, there's a really good example. So you see the glow there, you'll know that a boss back is there or a champion back. So we saw that glow, that's a, kind of like a little tip to sort of isolate these champion packs. So this is, there's a boss back right there. Nothing. And again, we're taking nothing with Cyclone. Or sorry, we're taking nothing from the Beatles elemental damage wise because of Cyclone. We just make sure we grab full rejuvenations as we're teleporting. So that's that level down. We cast Cyclone and Hurricane again. And we're on the final level of three. You can imagine how much of a pain in the butt there was a boss back there. This build would be without Enigma. But with Enigma, we just Tele Stomp. Hurricane AoE takes everything out. Another boss back, and there's the last one right here. Dead, and then we'll just finish up with Cold Worm. Burrower. So this is a super unique that's capped out. 78. But there you go, that's a run. We'll do two more just from the very start so you get an idea. Talk to Warov. Going to uh, the Rogan Camet is a quicker way of getting the Far Oasis. You just buff up. I didn't cast my bear. So there we go. Doesn't matter. Nice little mana shrine is timed there perfectly. Go for the mega layer and recharge there. And then rinse.
rinse and repeat. So teleporting and scanning. Kind of have a set pattern there. We look for the glow. We saw it. Champion pack of mosquitoes. Let's get something GG, for example. Run. I'm looking for auras too. So that was a might aura boss pack. That's a really good way of. You kind of. Once you've done a series of runs, you'll kind of get the idea of looking for like there's another kind of glow. I know that's a boss. So again, we're not talking to the extent of replacing a blizzard sorceress here in ancient tunnels, but this is absolutely good for variety if you're tired of doing thousands of your traditional standard magic finding runs. This is going to be the build for you, I hope. Sometimes I might only get like three boss packs or three champion packs, depending on... I feel like you want to try and keep the runs as quick as possible and not overthink trying to look and isolate for the boss packs, if that makes sense. So if you only get three as you're kind of teleporting around looking for them, don't worry about it, just go to the next level because there is three levels total. So even if you average three each level, it's going to be nine per mega layer clear. Regular again. Run here. Oh, there's a unique belt. Wouldn't that be cool to get a Lenny Mo? Unique sash. You can see this is really kind of like a mind numbing, very, very simple build to do. Just as long as you keep recasted on Cyclone and Hurricane, Telly Stomp around. You have your new meta mega layer farmer. Sand mega boss pack. Everything shatters. There. can if you want to use your natos. It is extra physical damage, but I don't really see the point considering how fast everything just dies from the pure hurricane damage. Cold worm down. Always check that chest. I never ever have gotten anything remotely close to good out of it, but you check it anyways. Last example run. But you guys probably have the idea by now, but we'll do one more run. There's a boss pack and a champion pack together. Let's go. Boss pack. Rare circle, sorry, set circlet. Trying to get something really easy for this build video. All that complete, could have got the towels. Let's get rid of that little one. We'll redo. That's probably a good idea. Yep. Looking for that neon glow. That's the biggest thing is you gotta get the hang of seeing any sort of glow in a hall hallway, and it's going to be a champion or boss pack, usually. There. There. Remember, these all have the potential of dropping Kirill's Might. Uh, any boss pack... Oh, did I miss one? Oh, just a minion. Any boss pack or champion in the bottom level, and then... Any boss pack in the first two. Looking for that glow again, we saw it. Boss pack. Thank you. 
some GG for the video, please. Last cold run in the box. There you go, the new Megat Lair meta farming build. Hope you guys enjoyed it and give it a shot. Well guys, there you have it. That wraps up everything that I wanted to cover for this Hurricane Megat Lair farming Windra build. Really do hope you guys enjoyed this video and you actually consider using this character. It is a little bit niche, but definitely cool for variety. And honestly, I think it's very effective. Megat Lair is always going to be the Megat Lair, but uh, I don't think any other build can actually farm it as good as this one. That's what I'm going to say, uh, but let me know in the comment section below whether or not you agree. And as always, you could throw a like on this video, share it, and even consider subscribing if you're new to my Diablo 2 channel. I post new weekly content and stream on a consistent basis, so there's always new stuff to look forward to, and your support with a sub would mean a lot. And I also personally want to thank each and every one of you who's a member of the Big D Gang that is hitting the join button below. You guys are helping me pursue the goal of a full-time YouTuber, so I could not do it without your support, and want to say thank you very much for that. Other than that, guys, hope you have a fan-frickin'-tastic day, and I'll see you in my next Diablo 2 video or live stream. Peace out.